Perfect. <clears throat> All right, good morning. My name is Russell Guilfoyle. I'm the founder of our bundle, or Rebundle, although everyone sees say our bundle. And my name is Russell, so it starts with an R. Uh, it is an online marketplace for professional services that saves businesses time, money, and keeps them anonymous. So when I say professional services, what I mean is Rebundle covers uh, proposal-based uh, third-party services uh, that are either specially licensed or technically trained. So think legal services, tax services, and the other ones you see listed here. So the problem, what's the problem? In a nutshell, the problem is, is that the uh, RFP process, the request for proposal process, the engagement of professional services is just incredibly inefficient for both the buyers and the sellers. So that's the businesses and the providers. <clears throat> First, it takes way too long. So the uh, typical sales funnel is intended to be quick, uh, but in practice, it takes far too much time, too much energy. There's too much um, back and forth between the businesses and the providers. Uh, to get truly competitive pricing, these businesses, these buyers, they need a, a threshold number of proposals. They need a certain amount of proposals. So that's going through the sales funnel two, three, 10, times and so that's two to three to ten marketing calls texts emails meetings uh, requests for information the second problem is professional services cost too much um, there may be uh, a number of reasons for that one of them is that buyers get exhausted going through these sales funnels they'll go through one maybe two and they're so exhausted that they stop at two proposals and then they're not getting a competitive number of bids and then stuck with the uncompetitive value price service. And then the third is missed opportunities. So providers are not using technology to identify cross-selling opportunities. So that's leaving buyers, that's leaving these businesses uh, either unaware or just not pursuing additional professional services that they would otherwise benefit from. So the solution is Rebundle. A, uh, a marketplace that standardizes and simplifies the request for proposal process. So uh, what it does is it will maximize the time and cost savings for business, uh, which then gives the business more time and money to pursue additional professional service opportunities that would be beneficial to them. Uh, the cherry on top is that the business stays anonymous until they respond to a proposal. So that means that the business is no longer punished uh, for soliciting a, a threshold number of proposals, punished with all those marketing emails, all those uh, text meetings, whatnot. Um, and they stay anonymous until they respond to the proposal of their choosing. So this feature also allows the business to secret shop their existing providers to see if they're getting competitive prices. Uh, the second core feature is what I call uh, no answer twice. So when a user, a business, goes through and fills out a service request uh, form, they answer the questions there. And if those questions appear in any other services, then their answer populates there, which saves them time on every subsequent service that they fill out. Uh, additionally, it allows for the feature of automated cross-selling, which basically identifies additional opportunities for that business faster than any other provider in the market. So. so how it works, here's a 30 second sped up demonstration of going through the RFP process through a bundle. Um, in reality, this could take a user two minutes for this specific service. So what happened is it started, they found a service, they opened up the service, saw a brief description, went into the RFP builder, uh, filled out the RFP builder, and downloaded the RFP, submitted it out, it goes out to all subscribing providers, and then they receive proposals through a secure Dropbox. And that's how they remain anonymous. So the business model is uh, that the businesses, the buyers, are free. They never pay anything. And then the providers, so the, the servicers, they can receive these proposals for free, and, but in order to respond to the proposals, they have to go uh, to a subscription plan. So that's either a flat fee monthly or a percentage of engagement. 
The uh, subscriptions and prices of the subscriptions would be per service because different services have different profit margins. <clears throat> so looking at the market, so the total market size for those six broad categories of professional services combined is about a trillion dollars in the US. Uh, globally, it's three times that, three trillion. Um, the uh, value that Rebundle can bring to that total addressable market uh, really comes in three fashions. It's the provider profit margins, provider marketing costs, and provider business development costs. <clears throat> so the weighted average profit margin is about 20% for professional services, so there's a lot of room for savings there. Uh, and then using Rebundle as a sales funnel um, it's going to be more cost effective than most other sales funnels saving on marketing and business development costs. The um, uh, service attainable market there is, is just a half a percent of that uh, service addressable market. The go to market plan. So go to market plan, uh, it's just me right now and a development team and I'll get to that. <clears throat> but uh, we are uh, operating kind of like on a consulting model right now. So it's going out, identifying North Carolina-based middle market companies or portfolios of companies, meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, seeing what their professional services needs are, and then building out those services on the platform. The more we can iterate on that, the more services we build out, and then the, uh, there's exponential growth of the value of the automated cross-selling and the no, the no answer twice features. So the team right now, it's uh, myself, uh, I'm, a, I'm an attorney, I'm a CPA, I'm an MBA, I'm a bookkeeper, so I, I uh, live in a lot of those fields. And um, Halo Weave, so Halo Weave, got a great relationship with them, they're out of Bangalore, they uh, continue to impress me and they are hungry for success like I am. Uh, I started this six months ago, built the website, built the automations, the back end, the database, they helped me build the forms. Uh, and are currently helping me uh, make it more scalable. So my ask at this stage, I'm just asking for introductions to go-to-market customers so that I can uh, de-risk the business through validated customer success and uh, bootstrap my growth until raising capital. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. Um, Good, good, good idea. I, uh, it, it's interesting. I've, uh, I've got a little experience in the uh, kind of the community marketplace. Um, and so my, my first question to you, well, first I have to do the obligatory. Um, y you always have to think about how much time you have. Um, you had to cram in. Uh, when I'm looking at these presentations, um, I'm looking at three things. First and foremost, uh, you know, who is it? Who, who and why, um, and because uh, if you want to have a successful business, it's, it's down to the person. You know, there'll be so many challenges, there'll be so many whack-a-mole, there'll be so much stuff. It's, who's the person? Uh, the second thing is uh, the market and the timing, of, most importantly, the timing of the market. Um, and third, and it's somewhat distant third, is the idea, you know, because we're, we're not talking about alchemy here, you know, it's like, you're gonna to have to form and, and push forward. I mean, it helps if you've got a really interesting, good idea, but ultimately the people in the market are gonna uh, be much more of a factor. So you didn't get to the person until after the time. So technically I didn't hear it um, and, the, and the ask, but uh, um, maybe you know, your 30 second demo, I mean, you know, in, a, in six minutes, like maybe, I, I mean, I, I didn't even, I wasn't even, I'm kind of old, I wasn't even able to focus on what that was. That was just like, blah, 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 you know, so I would probably cut that out. Um, I know that you were trying to make the point that it's super easy, but you could just make the point that it's super easy. It's a couple of screens, it takes the average person like two minutes, you know, as opposed to people hear RFP, they're like, oh my God, onerous, like, you know, P PDF, like nightmare. So. Uh, you could make that point by just making that point, I think. Um, my big question to you is, when you're trying to put together an online marketplace, you've got a chicken and an egg problem. Yep. You know, it's like you've got, you, you really have to market to two different groups, both of which are like, I'm not coming unless you've got the other. You know, it's like the people, uh, the service providers aren't going to necessarily be like, well, who, 
who, what kind of customers have you got that are going to be looking at this stuff? And then on the other side, they're like, well, why would I spend time with you? You know, like you've only got six service providers on here, you know, in the beginning, you know, so it's like nobody wants to go to a party where there's not people inside, like getting their rock on, you know, but, but they all want to be early, you know, so it's, uh, it's, uh, and yeah, I would, I would just love to hear how you're going to attract um, both groups quickly. But I, I think with the four introductions, like you're onto something. You're like, okay, I'm going to go after them first, you know, and then that will help attract the, the other group. Turn this back on. Perfect. Uh, no, thank you for the feedback. So to address the chicken and the egg problem is, uh, yes, that is uh, not the first time I have heard that. Um, and, and so my approach on the go-to-market is, um, one, focusing on, on North Carolina. I'm going to loop back to, to why that is. Um, but two, it's a consulting approach that I call it. That's, that's really how I address it. So instead of going out and trying to, to market to everybody at once and trying to get them to come to the party at the same time and see each other and then stay, um, I'm going out uh, to the businesses and just saying, I mean, to me, it's a simple, maybe not easy, but a simple conversation of, you know, which services are you getting now that you want competitive pricing for? And how many, how many proposals did you get originally? I mean, I bet it's three or less. And so I have to beat three. And so if they want competitive pricing, then I say, OK, you want this. I'll go build it on my platform. It'll take you a fraction of the time it did originally. And fill it out on platform. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, that RFP that you just made on the platform in a fraction of the time. And I'm, I'm going to walk it around to providers that meet your parameters. So I'll ask them for their parameters. You want you want big four accounting, you want boutique law, just depending on what they're looking for. Um, I can be far more targeted. And then so when I do that, uh, I'll get them far more responses than they got originally. And then it's just building that with additional services. And then the reason to stay in North Carolina at first is because of the synergy of having related services. Um, so when I go to the next customer, I just I want there to be a high likelihood that the service that I just built for the previous it's going to be one that they want as well. And then so it increases the, the value of that, the cross-selling and the no answer twice feature. That was a really good answer to that question, by the way. Uh, you know, you're like, you're going to geographical target and you're going to, what I would call, hand crank it in the beginning. You know, like you're going to go out and give the first customers the, you know, your personal service. You know, right. you're going to go out and you're going to grab, corral a couple of, uh, you know, really good responses to that RFP and then use them in a, in a geographical region to go forward. So that's, that's great. Because the boil of the ocean problem is super, yeah. super big when you're trying to start an online marketplace for X. You know, yeah. it's like it very quickly can be uh, hard to show progress. And I, I loved your answer there. That was very, very good. All right, uh, Russell, so, uh, there we go. Uh, a couple of things that I really liked. You know, I liked your setup of problem solution, right? I would also just encourage you to simplify that. Here's the you know, a little bit uh, in terms of what the message is. Um, I, I will reinforce what Garth said about building a marketplace. You know, if, if, if you're looking at the startup difficulty level, you know, marketplaces are the most difficult, and the reason being you got to get both sides, right? You got to get buyers and sellers, and you got to do it contemporaneously, and that's really hard. Um, I, when, when I was at Bank of America, we, we invested in a dozen digital marketplaces. It was when those were sort of first evolving. And that was always the challenge, right, is how do you, how do you get the buyers and sellers? And then one of the things that you do there, we, you, and, and, and actually, uh, Kevin, raise your hand a minute. So Kevin Pinnell worked with me at the bank at the time, and we came up with some really innovative strategies around actually providing the people that were providing the services of actually getting them equity into the platforms themselves. So that's a, that's a little technique. I, we call it a jump ball equity strategy. Um, if you want to get more, talk to Kevin. He can fill you in on that. Uh, but it's an interesting strategy for, you know, to get a buyer, you have to have something you're selling, and how, how do you, you know, chicken and egg, right? It's, it's very difficult. Um, you listed out your bunch of services, and I'll get back to what Garth said. You know, one of the most important things in a startup is you cannot boil the ocean. You've got to really have direct focus. So instead of having a half dozen professional services that you're pitching, I would narrow that down to one or two at most. Um, the, uh, uh, the, other, the other piece in here, what is it, what's in it for the buyer and the seller? 
you simplify that messaging a little bit, right? For, for the buyer, you presumably lower price, uh, more access to, uh, to, to a broader uh, clientele without having to do a lot more work. And then for the seller of the services, right, you, you really need to focus in on, hey, look, when you're selling professional services, there's a cost, an internal cost of doing that with your internal sales force. If you use your platform, this platform, the only way you're going to get professional services providers to use your platform is if you say that customer acquisition cost is lower. So you got to figure out if you can indeed deliver that and, and, and really hone that message. And then the last thing, and I should have started with this, right? It's uh, any, you know, any investor in particular, I know you were only looking for introductions here, but um, from an investor point of view, and uh, you know, it, it's team, team, team. So you, d you did talk about, it's you right now. Uh, you did throw in at the last minute after the clock expired, so I'm like Garth, I couldn't pay much attention to it. But there was another provider and it was a little, little unclear how they fit into your solution set. But one of the things you missed about you was why is this a passion for you? What led you into it? And that story, by the way, particularly when you get into investor pitches, that's gonna be the key. Um, and, and, and by the way, a, as you get to an investor level, they're going to want to see more than, more than you as well, right? So one of the other bits of coaching here is you'll figure out a way uh, to, to, to broaden the team that's attached. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we actually got a couple minutes. Does anybody have any questions for Russell? Any questions from the audience? Good, everybody understands what he does? All right. All right, well, sounds good. All right, Russell, thank you. Thank you.